Okie dokie, thank you for joining me today. Uh, in the, well, this morning, I should say, we're going to go ahead and review something referred to as a relative clause, or in this case, we're looking at relative clauses. Uh, now, relative clauses are essentially a way to add more information to a noun in a sentence, and it helps to avoid redundancy, and it enables what we refer to as smoother sentences. And in a lot of cases, a relative clause, which we'll get into in just a little bit, are a great way to prevent you from having to write two separate sentences to contribute additional insights about a noun or reference a subject or whichever part of the sentence you're trying to elaborate further upon. So that's traditionally why we use them. And they do represent kind of those next steps as you begin your language journey and you start to advance your writing skills. All right, that being said, the definition, like we kind of roughly went over, is a relative clause works to provide additional information about a noun and are introduced by a relative pronoun. And there are relative pronouns that I've listed out for you, which you've likely seen before, such as the word who, whom, whose, which, and that. Sometimes you'll see that listed as a demonstrative, like that, these, or this. However, in this case, we're going to look at it as a relative pronoun. Okay, now, in this activity, what we're going to do is we're going to read the sentence in, their, in its entirety, and I'd like for you to help me identify what our relative clause is and which noun is the object of that relative clause. Consider it um, largely as um, like a, an adjective phrase. That's essentially what it is, right? Because again, it's targeting a noun and it's expanding further upon it. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at sentence number one, which reads, the student who answered the question correctly received a prize. Okay, well, I know in this sentence for number one, we're talking about the subject, the student. That's kind of our focus now. Well, what about the student? We know the student received a prize. That's kind of the direct, um, that's kind of the, the purpose of the sentence, right? To let you know that they received the prize. However, the additional details, which direct your attention once again towards the student, happen to be who answered the question correctly. And you'll notice as well, it begins with that relative pronoun who. So if you were to identify the relative clause as an underline or highlight, I would highlight who answered the question correctly tells us more about the student. Now, with relative clauses, what you may have already noticed is they're not considered necessary insofar as if you were to exclude them from a sentence, it would not change the meaning of that sentence, okay? So you're welcome to read it both with and without the inclusion of that relative clause. Let's go ahead and take a look at sentence number two, <coughs> excuse me, which reads, the car which she bought is very fast. Okay, well here in this sentence, and it's not always the case that it's the subject, but it just so happens to be here, our subject is the car, and then we know it's, well, it's very fast, that's great. However, the additional insights about the car is which she bought, so whoever she is, is the one who purchased this car, happens to be very fast, so that would be your relative clause. Taking a look at sentence number three, we have the restaurant where we ate was excellent. Once more, our subject being the restaurant. Well, it happened to be, or rather it was excellent. What additional insights do we have about it? Well, it starts with our relative pronoun where. Where we ate would be our relative clause. Okay, let's move on to sentence number four. We have the book that I read was fascinating. Our subject being the book. What's the goal of the sentence? Well, it's to tell you that it was fascinating. What's the additional insight? That, relative pronoun, that I read, tells us more about that book. Again, you don't have to include it. It's just a means of expanding further upon a noun. All right, now our fifth and final sentence would be, the teacher whose class I enjoy is very kind. Our subject is the teacher. What's the goal of the sentence? Well, it's to tell you that the teacher, well, is very kind. That to be verb is. Okay, what additional insights do we have about the teacher? It starts with our relative pronoun whose, right there. Whose class I enjoy tells us more about that teacher. Okay, well, hopefully you got them all. As practice, what I would encourage you to do is in the comment section below, if you feel so driven, I would have you create five sentences using each of the different relative pronouns that are available to you, which are who, whom, whose, which, and that. So please give it a go. I'd love to see what you produce. 
Uh, otherwise, again, this is just an exercise reviewing relative clauses. Sometimes you'll hear them referred to as adjective clauses or adjective phrases. They essentially behave the same way insofar as, once more, they elaborate further upon a noun in the sentence. Not always the subject necessarily, just in these examples. I was a little heavy-handed with it. But uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. All right, thank you for joining me today, and uh, I look forward to hopefully working with you in the next one.